Welcome to Women With Drive, a podcast from the Deakin Melbourne Boomers, talking all things women's hoops. Hosted by Boomer's own, Lou Brown. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Women With Drive, a podcast from the Deakin Melbourne Boomers. I'm your host, Lou Brown, and today we're going to look back to last night's thriller in Tokyo and look forward to how the Opals can find a path through to the quarterfinals. We will also have a new feature of Women With Drive with some questions from our listeners that I'll have a chance to answer at the end of this episode. First, as much as I don't want to talk about another Opals loss, unfortunately, here we are, as they went down to a tough Chinese team in a real fight, 74 to 76. I have to say, in my opinion, the difference in that game was Steph Talbot. The activity that she brings on the defensive end just lifted the entire team. Her on-ball D, getting deflections. I mean, she just led that end. And in the second quarter, the Opals matched that and were able to get the lead. We obviously saw Talbot leave the floor limping late in the second and not return. So that was super, super disappointing. But I can only imagine even more disappointing for her as we did see it on her face. Throughout the loss to China, it seemed the Opals struggled to find any, any rhythm on, the, on offense and looked like there was glad rap on the ring during stretches of that game. Did they grind it out though or what? China extending the lead out to 11 points. They fought back to get it to a tie game and Jenna Hay giving us life, knocking down two huge threes to tie the game, but an arguable foul call at the end put China at the free throw line and got them just over the edge, breaking not only the Opals, but every supporter's hearts. I'll say it, if that game went into overtime, the Opals would have won. All momentum was in their hands. We also saw more rotations coming off the bench, and it was good to see Sarah Blickovs come in and have some really impactful minutes. But now, to move on to the quarterfinals, it still looks good. So most likely, they will rely on France losing to USA, and from here, they will know exactly how many points they need to beat Puerto Rico by to be the second best third place team. The other route is for Canada to lose to Spain. But what is clear is that the Opals play the last pool game. So they will know what they need to do by then. And they are still in it yet. So let's make sure we stick with them and keep pulling for the Opals. But let's look forward to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. They're another team in this Olympics and this pool who are making their women's basketball Olympic debut, making history all around this year. After appearing in their first ever FIBA Women's America Cup final, securing a silver to achieve their best ever result. So a huge congratulations to Puerto Rico and I hope they continue to keep making history for their country, just not against the Opals on Monday night. <laughs> But the last time these two teams met was in France in 2020. Australia came up on top 100 to 74. And in this game, Ezzy was quite significant on the offense, on the offensive end. And this will have to be the case again on Monday. Puerto Rico have had a bit of a tough Olympics campaign, falling to China in their first game, 97-55, and Belgium, 87-52. And I really have no doubt the Opals are going to produce a very similar result. Puerto Rico will be led by veteran and point guard Pamela Rosado. First making the national team in 2004, Rosado has been key to the growth of not only the national team in Puerto Rico, but has been crucial in changing the landscape of women's basketball in Puerto Rico. And from, and from what I've read, she talks about that in very high regard and very proudly. I mean, these are the kind of stories I love hearing and learning about. Rosado finished with 14 points against China and five points against Belgium. Another key player for Puerto Rico will be Jasmine Guathme. Guathme was drafted in 2016, a longer guard, who actually played for the Canberra Capitals in 2016, averaging 8.5 points and 4.5 rebounds in the WNBL. And in this Olympics tournament, she's had 20 points against Belgium and eight against China. The Opals had a bit of trouble against her in 2020 as Guathme finished with 30 points. So I'm sure she will be a focal point for them in this next matchup. Definitely an exciting player to watch this game. The Opals will face Puerto Rico on Monday at another 10 p.m. tip-off. A good game to look forward to and fingers crossed 
we will secure their spot in the quarters. Now, don't go away just yet. I have a couple of questions here from some viewers. Women with drive. All right, first one. So this is from Alice in Surrey Hills, who plays for the Camberwell Dragons. And she says, I'm a huge Boomers fan and love watching our own Ezzy, Tess and Kayla playing their hearts out for the Opals in Tokyo. Given they will be with the Boomers in the WNBL this season, what other members of the Opals will be playing in the WNBL this season? Okay, Alice, so that's a good one. We have Jenna O'Hay with the Southside Flyers, Sarah Blickarves also with the Southside Flyers, Alana Smith with the Adelaide Lightning, Steph Talbot with the Adelaide Lightning, Leilani Mitchell, Leilani Mitchell, Bendigo Spirit, and Tessa Levy, Bendigo Spirit as well. So that's all I have for you today. Remember that Melbourne Boomers memberships went live this past week, so just head to Melbourne Boomers website for details and get on board. On Thursday's episode, I'll be chatting with the legendary Christy Harrower, talking more Olympics and medal rounds. Thanks everyone for tuning in to this episode of Women With Drive. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to watch the Opals take action in their final pool game tonight against Puerto Rico at 10 p.m. Thanks for listening to Women With Drive, hosted by Lou Brown. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and if you could, leave us a review.